everyone. The ability for us to make great automations is always expanded when we have access to new modules, ways to connect our automations to new systems in the ecosystem. And of course, we're all wanting to build things with AI and the place to be building fast AI, especially with open models, is Grok. Grok is uh, this new company that uh, makes their own hardware. They run their own hardware. They offer it as a cloud. If you're in the market, you can buy the hardware and put it in a data center. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use their API, Grok Cloud. Until uh, now, we've had to build it with the HTTP module, figure out the API, figure out how to build the JSON object, and it's been a mess. Fortunately, today, I'll tell you there is now a Grok module native built in. And perhaps the most exciting part isn't the Grok part, it's that it's perhaps the first time we've had access to the new Llama 3.1 modules as well as the Google modules, Mixtral modules, uh, models, sorry, are made available natively inside of our make uh, scenarios. Uh, without having to, to do shenanigans with the HTTP module and building JSON, um, which is uh, tricky in the ways that it's like you've got to escape things. It's, uh, if you've watched some of the previous videos, even I messed that up. So this Scrock module is going to be fantastic. And on today, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the, uh, the different... So this is a Grok custom app, but it's a set of modules that we can use to do chat completions, do by chat completions with JSON, so that if you're expecting a JSON output, how can we get that JSON out? Already parsed, ready to be used. This is incredible. So you don't need to spend an extra operation to turn text that you get into uh, the bundle that we want to use. You can also look at uh, doing the, the uh, translations with Whisper. Uh, that's part of the API, we'll look at that. And also, uh, trans, uh, sorry, I said transcriptions, I meant how to do transcriptions, turning uh, audio into text, but also translations, turning uh, the audio from one language to text in English, um, which hopefully is the direction in which to do your translations. Uh, certainly, that's the, the way we offer offered in with the model. And so, they're the big four uh, modules that are in this Grok uh, app that's uh, now available. Um, so uh, if that's interesting to you, any of those features interesting to you, then this is the video. Let's have a look at it. Hi, uh, we just have a quick look. So we've got um, these uh, five here. There is also make a custom API call. Um, there aren't too many other APIs that aren't available, but if they came out with a new API tomorrow, then at least you've got a way to make that call. But we're gonna primarily look at the, uh, the four. Um, these two are very similar. Um, so let's start. First step is you'll need to make a, uh, add yourself a connection. Um, you just go to the Grok website, create an account, it's free, create an API key, it's free. I give it the name like make.com, so you'll end up, you want a different key for different situations so you can keep track of them all. Uh, perhaps put your email address here and uh, then pop that key in there and you're good to go. Um, now, the, uh, the, the list of models that are available is huge, uh, both the new Llama 3.1 models, as well as the older models. Um, and of course, there's the, uh, the, the Google Gemma models that came out, uh, the Mixtral models, and uh, uh, of course, those are the tool use ones that they're, they're coming out new. Uh, I recommend getting, if you're uh, interested in what models are coming out and getting the announcements uh, followed, there's uh, Croc has a Discord, um, and it's probably on Twitter and this list is live, so if a new model comes out, it will automatically refresh in front of your eyes and you'll be able to pick. So what's missing here, for example, is the 3.1403 billion, 403 billion model. They have not yet made that available in their API, but the moment they do, it'll be available to us here inside of Make. Let's go to the best one, um, and we want to build out some messages. Uh, you need to specify a role, and uh, give me a number 20 and we have to do this quick. Okay, run that. We either press the, uh, the arrow, uh, the play button, or uh, command enter. And we see here the result as much as this is all the, uh, the attributes that you get back from the, the uh, API from Brock. 
and you can use those. You can see the value down here. Um, there's the answer. But uh, it is also put here nicely as the result key a property. So you can pull the result from there. Um, let's do something else. Right. Column about ads. Make it numeric. That. And here is our result. And what do I mean by that? If you knew to, uh, say we wanted to uh, pop that into, send that back as a telegram, I was using uh, there, or, uh, or put that, whatever it is, into uh, your CRM, send it as a text message, uh, you just pass that through. So I'll just do set variable just as a demonstration. Column, and all we do is we reference that result property, and we'll always get that value stored there. So there is our variable. Put that wherever it is you wish to use it. But so that makes that really easy to get that text straight out. So that's the chat completion. Uh, we have a couple of options. Uh, you, I highly recommend, just from a general large language model uh, user story, is to include a system message. Um, if you do, make sure that's first. And the system message is a way of you giving your personality, giving uh, some constraints, giving it some suggestions of what uh, output looks like that you prefer, um, some examples of given certain inputs, what an output might look like. Um, for example, uh, if you're asked to write on about cats, laugh, listen, and remind them that their cat still thinks All right, let's just see what happens. I refuse to write a poem about cats. Their owners are owned, that's a fact. And in fact, it's, it's, uh, it's given you a poem and written about how it's refusing to write poems about cats. So it's, it's, done, it's done the system job at the same time, it's still written a poem. So, touche, well done, well played. But that is the chat completion. The, uh, the, the fields, etc. If you've used the Open AI module, I think it looks very similar. You can constrain the maximum tokens, and then there's some other uh, fields that you can pass in if you know what they're, what they're used for. To move on to the next uh, module, is, uh, we'll take a pivot, a pivot here at the response format. So one of the features of uh, the Grok uh, API, a bit like the Open AI API, is the ability to specify a response format which to say that um, you really want a JSON object. You know, you often, let's, let's just try to demonstrate the challenge here that uh, why this exists. Um, I want responses to be in JSON with the following format. Um, the following keys, let's say, name, And uh, that would be fine. Then I am X Williams, almost. You know, let's just pick a number. Let's see what happens. And uh, it's given us some some uh, output now. By the way, this uh, this is not why. In case you uh, you knew that was just me demonstrating the value used. So here it is. Here is our result. And you can see there is the JSON. But the full result actually includes these triple ticks, which are more of a, um, apps, a markdown syntax for saying, in here is some, some JSON text that we want to format a certain way. Not what we want at all. If we want JSON, we just want the JSON. So this is one of the tricks, the challenges of using the last language model sometimes is they might think that they're more about displaying text to the screen than they are about giving you a data format. So we have, the uh, response format JSON, uh, JSON format, which uh, let's run that before I promote too heavily what it does. You can see now it's given us a nice clean JSON object. And if we were to pass that, it's still a string, but it's in the JSON format. So if we were now to pass that to a JSON parser, pass that result straight in, we will now get a nice uh, bundle with clean properties that we can. So now we get name and age. And now we could 
easily put those into our CRM. And to do that with the set variable, uh, you can see I can now get the name out. Whereas before with the result, it was still a string, but if I parse the JSON, I now get the values as properties that I can now use um, and put into CRM. So that is what the, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a field you should know about. It allows you just to coerce the output into clean uh, data. Having said that, there is one thing we can do better than that with this new Brock model. I'm going to delete everything. Uh, actually, I won't delete everything, just move it to one side. Uh, let's move on to the second module, which is the, oops, which is the JSON chat. It's that same idea of uh, we want to do JSON, but because we're inside make and we know that it's JSON, it does one extra trick. Let's just connect that up. I'm going to unconnect that. I'm going to borrow the start. So this little icon here is tells the, the scenario where to start, and we're just going to say that this is our new. This is just uh, unattached. This is our new uh, scenario. So let's have a look inside connection. Same model, um, and it's so what's it's given us. By the way, I did not type this. This was a um, a default system prompt. I'll explain why. Um, now, to note that what it's doing in this module is exactly what we did below, in that it is. I can't see it. It's connected, so I can see it. Um, it's doing the same job in that it's uh, everything's the same. It's automatically setting a response format to JSON format internally, so you don't have to. As such, it knows the rules. And this is from some early testing. Uh, turns out some users of the JSON format don't know that you need to do some things. One is you need to provide a system prompt, and you need to include the phrase JSON in that system prompt. Part of the rules of, of the model, rules of Grok. And uh, then you want to give it an example. Uh, now here I've given an example JSON, but probably some description of what the structure looks like. So the way this model has been written, um, and uh, to give away, uh, I helped build this model, so I get to be uh, the example. Uh, it's to give an example of what you should put into your system prompt so that uh, the, it behaves the way you wish you make it. Ever. So we could say that we want to name the URL, and so now we say, I'm Bob Smith, 21, from USA. So now when we run this model, we get, not only does it pull the values out into the JSON, but it then goes to the next step, and automatically passes the JSON into our properties. So we save, a, um, we save a, a, an op, in every step, in uh, along is called an operation or an op, um, and you get a, a thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand ops per month. So if we can save one, we can cut it from two to one and we halve. So anytime we can save an op is a good idea. And so one of the benefits of the JSON chat completion module uh, mo module is that it saves that extra op by automatically parsing the JSON in the result. Uh, Katie Ledecky, oh no, I can't even spell, I'll just say Katie. Um, oh, it's terrible, and I can't remember how old she's either. This one, the 1500 this morning, excellent champion. Um, I'll just say Carol, uh, 39. And once again, we can see that name and age. And what I mean by that is that if we were to clone, copy this module, paste it. Oh, so it's the same module. Just need to rewire it. Now we can go straight in to the result and pull out the name. Just demonstrating again that we did not need to parse the JSON. Internally, there's JSON, but it automatically passed it, and we get to use those properties immediately. So that's one of the reasons you might like to use the JSON chat completion module, is that you get clean properties out from your uh, AI, which is awesome. The last two uh, modules to talk about are the audio module. Let's just do it. 
All right. Um, at module, we did starting gun. Go back to Brock, and we've got two left. We want transcription and translation, but both we need an audio file. So let's go and get ourselves an audio file. Uh, Google Drive, download a file. Load a file. Siri does not want to download. This reload. Will we be short with things? Just to recap, we we need an audio file in order to do the description. We'll select the file from the list. Tutorials folder, audio folder. What's in here? Something that we describe. Let's run that so we get the contents. Bundle. We uh, we don't get the actual file. We get a link to a file. So now we need to. Link, send down. There it is, data. So that's we're good to go. We've got the data object. So now we can move back onto Grok. So we've got transcription and translation. Here we want to do a transcription. It automatically links to the file object, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the system prompt in a minute. If we run this, you'll see why we want a system prompt. It doesn't know how to spell. Well, it knows how to spell, but if you've got spelling that's distinct or novel or just an alternate that's more common for, for the language that you use, this is where we might want to use the system prompt. So I'd like to help it learn to spell Dr. Nick. I'd like to help it spell Mokra. Fortunately, we have the system prompt for that. Um, and the system prompt is, is um, reading the documentation, the system prompt is, is not uh, an instruction like you might see in the normal text models, but more it's some text that's added to the start of the transcription, but not return. It just helps coax it into some language. Words I use. Uh, Dr. Nick. Mokra. Some other words that aren't in this text, but relevant and often misspelled. Lava. Uh, the words that are used that are often misspelled. So here we now see that um, it's now correctly spelling Dr. Mokra and uh, we've got transcription. Absolutely fantastic. Super happy that uh, that exists in the universe. The last uh, one that we'll work on is translation, which allows you to take a non-English file Rules It's a French. It's the Olympics. Rock translation automatically picks up a file. There's no other fields that you need to worry about uh, ordinarily. In our result, see that it made it was in that file. So these are the four main um, scenarios. It's four main modules that you can now get with Grok doing AI using Llama 3.1, using Gemma, using Mixtral. Um, now the uh, sorry, the uh, that's what you can use for the chat completions for the transcription and the translation. Currently, it's just the Whisper model. From OpenAI, but maybe there'll be others, but it's it's very good, so uh, worth a check. And uh, I hope you find use 
for the Brock model. Um, if only because it's super fast and currently free, which these are pretty best, uh, pretty pretty good features to have. Um, we help make the the uh, Brock model. So if you have any uh, feedback, if there's anything working, not working, anything you'd like to see in it, drop a thing in a comment, drop a comment in the uh, below the video, or uh, find the contact form. And, and uh, if you need to write something longer, a bit more private. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.